Thanks for tuning in today for another new and exciting episode from Stock Car Facts, which we try to post every Tuesday at about noon. Or you can watch some of our previous episodes. Here at Stock Car Facts, we would really love to recreate the race day sights, smells, and sounds that we first experienced for ourselves in 1974 at Michigan International Speedway. But unfortunately, we know that's not possible here. However, we can do the next best thing in that we can share with you what happened at these events and we can talk to those people who created those memories. Or, well, you know, those facts. So we'd appreciate it if you sit back and relax and enjoy this latest episode today of Stock Car Facts with me, your host, Kevin Schwarzen. Oh, and by the way, later, you'll have a chance to comment on this content. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button as well as the follow bell to be notified of brand new shows right here. And we'd appreciate it if you'd share this on all of your social media platforms. Thank you. Today on Stock Car Facts. Is I had a technical difficulty <laughs> with the this section of the interview with Bob and uh, I could not get it back. And Bob was gracious enough, as he always has been in the last, what do we go back, 40, 40 50, years. 60, 70 years? <laughs> yeah. <like that>? Yeah. <laughs> to let me come by here in Huntersville, North Carolina, and do it again at, at a, an appliance establishment. Can we mention that? Yeah, we can mention Plaza Appliance. Sure. There you go. You, yeah. want to, you can give out the address. I don't care. Plaza Appliance, Smart Sanford Road, in Huntersville, North Carolina. Come by and see me. Come by and see go. Bob, and you give me a great deal, yeah. and uh, that's as much as I'll say because I can't make the sale for him. <laughs> <laughs> so. so where we left yeah. off, we were uh, you were uh, helping Richie Panch, mm -hmm. and um, – Maybe talk a little bit about who Richie, I don't know if we covered that, but maybe cover no, again who really. Richie Panch yeah, was. That's, that's, that's good. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Richie was the son of Marvin and Betty Panch out of uh, Daytona Beach. And of course, if you know NASCAR history, you know Marvin Panch. Um, but Richie was uh, a young guy, about probably 17, 18 years old. And I remember going up to Pocono to see him race very early on and just started following him. He's just a young guy. He was you know, a rookie in NASCAR in 74. Uh, and I just started following him. He had a little fan club started uh, from a guy in uh, Ormond Beach. And I just got involved with it. I'm only 12 years old, so it's, <laughs> wow. it's nothing. But that's how I really got started with, with fan clubs, with my mom's, with, with Richard Petty, and then Richie Panch. And then Richie ran a couple years, and then uh, he um, stopped racing, and he tried to get back into it. And then, unfortunately, he perished in that plane crash. Right. Uh, plane crash. Um, but, How long ago has uh, it been now? That's, I was in the early 80s, I believe. Wow. So it's been a while. Um, but that's that's really what got my taste or for racing was being involved with Richie and, and going to the races up north mainly and just following him, tracking him. And then, you know, just wanted to get into a little bit more and more. And that's, you know, when I came across with the uh, opportunities with Buddy Arrington and then Richard Petty. So, you know, we can talk about that, too, as well. Yeah, and that's that perfect segue. Yeah. <laughs> um, you didn't, you didn't, I mean, you were, like say, you were 12. Yeah. I mean, you could do that, like Richard and, and Morris talk about it all the time. We were kids, we helped our dad, but yeah. into the 70s, you really couldn't do that. No. When was the time that you could start help? I'm, I mean, obviously, you're, you're well, I would think, yeah. with your family connection with the Petties, your next option, oh, well, I'll go help. I'll help the petties. Well, yeah, that. But the fact is, is that when you when you back then, look, look the people snuck in the garage area at fourteen and fifteen. <laughs> no, the guy on the other side of the camera snuck in the garage Never. area in Michigan at fifteen. I can so, or deny so, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> so, uh, but I never. In all honesty, I don't ever remember sneaking in um, in a garage area. I did try to go. I did try to go into the garage area with a pit pass which is a no-no, but sometimes they let you in, but they didn't actually sneak in through a window like some people. <laughs> so, uh, but Under that, between. but at, at that point, age 15, 16 years old, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to do anything of any, um, you know, great from a, from, from working on a car with the petties. So I'm going to get involved in this a little bit. I'll track down some other drivers and I tracked down guys like Cecil Gordon, uh, Frank Warren, and then I landed with the Arringtons, and it just happened to be that Buddy was a guy uh, at one particular Dover race who needed a little bit of help, 
Uh, he introduced me to his son, Joey, who was a crew chief. And Joey said, come on by on Sunday, we'll, we'll put you to work. And I just started hauling gas back and forth. And that just meant when the gas tanks were emptied into the car, they were put on the pit road. You put them in a wagon, you schlep them down to Union 76 <laughs> at that time. And they fill them up and you bring them back. And then you waited 120 laps to do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> but it got my taste for the sport and for the involvement in the crew uh, and, and the aspect. So what happened is, as I got, I started doing that and I started doing some other stuff. And then lo and behold, I'm catching gas. I'm over a pit wall doing that. And uh, then an opportunity comes with Kyle Petty. So I'll segue right into that. Kyle gets his start at Talladega or at Daytona, a New Yorker race. He wins. They push him along to say, "Let's run five races this year, Kyle." So I'm Lincoln. I think he wrecked them the first two. He practices wrecked just about every one of them. <laughs> but uh, but I was like, "Oh man, now I'll be wear the I wear the STP colors." Kyle's got a second team at Petty Enterprises. I can do the same thing at Kyle's and maybe even do a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to be wearing a pit crew uniform instead of t-shirt and jeans. Because <laughs> that was the attire in a Buddy Arrington pit crew. So uh, I, I went to a couple races. Of course, Kyle didn't qualify for some. He wrecked. He did whatever. And then by Charlotte in that first year, uh, he made that race. And all I remember that day is basically hauling gas and sweeping out the, the, pits, the pit area. Uh, with Speedy Dry because it rained and they put speed and they tried to dry it off and and I was the the punk kid to say hey go out there and sweep that I'm like okay but I had a uniform on <laughs> so we went to Michigan that year and uh, Kyle was running at that race as well at the August race and I think it was August I'm, I'm trying to remember now but it's anyway yeah. yeah the August race and um, I was there for that yeah so <laughs> I was I was helping Kyle's in Kyle's crew. And Richard actually won the race that day. And as he crossed the stripe and took the checkered flag, I, have, I looked down at the crew, and they were happy, but they weren't, like, ecstatic of, like, we won this race. And Richard drives down Pitt Road and goes into the winner's circle, and nobody from his crew goes. Huh. It was strange. Dale Inman, uh, Dale Inman might have gone, but I, I don't remember. But the other guys, over the wall guys, nobody went. So... Richard had a crew in Victory Lane that basically made up of the guys of that were like hauling gas, <laughs> taking taking lap times, things like that. Nobody over the wall went. Nobody that worked on the Monte Carlo went. Everybody no. that worked on the Magnum yeah. went. <laughs> so, wow. so the one guy says to me who's working with the, in the crew with me, with Kyle, says, hey, let's go. And I'm like, can we do that? He says, no one else is going. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So... Um, Hopefully, Kevin will show one of these pictures I of me and Victor. Yeah. When we did it the first time. Yes. I went back in my memory bank. At the time, Victory Lane was in the infield. Yeah. Right on the front that's, stretch. That's right. That's right. So, you know, the intrepid person I was, I climbed over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is not good because people can see you up there. But yeah. but in this case, yeah. the king wants so you paying yeah. attention to him. Right. Right. So, I did get some shots. And, and I do remember thinking... I look back and go, wait a minute, you're right. I don't remember seeing Inman in the no, shots, no. Morris in the shots, no, no, all the regular people no. you would think. Wade and, Thornburg, who was Wade the tire Thornburg, guy. Right. And the other, I forget who changed the tires, but um, <clears throat> but Jack May wasn't there, and I forget his name. But it was just mostly the guys, the volunteer crew members, were, were the ones that went to Victory Lane. And you don't know why. And um, so me and this guy, Kevin, uh, who was working in the Kyle's crew, we went down and stood <laughs> Stood on the victory on the podium and everything like we owned it, like we like we were supposed to be there. And I'm 17 years old, thinking this is great. It's it's only going to go up from here. I'll be back here a hundred times. You know, we'll do all this. And uh, that was the last time I ever was in victory lane <laughs> after a race for winning for for, for uh, coming first place. So, um, but it was just it was a strange occurrence. It was just a very surreal moment in the sense that none of his guys were there. But but Kyle, some of Kyle's crew went, and it was just a hodgepodge of uh, of crew members. Hmm. And um, it was shortly thereafter that I realized that I wasn't going to do much more than carry gas and sneak into Victory Lane. <laughs> so I went back to I went back to work for Buddy and work with help out Buddy, and um, and I got more titles and more opportunities to do things with the crew or the car that I didn't have before. 
And um, lo and behold, another year or so later, and I'm and I'm I'm the Jack man on the team. So, um, and and that was a you know for three or four year run, that was a blast. And I just it was it was it was just a great time. And um, we parlay that in when they car when they downsize the cars. So Buddy had to come up with all the new cars, the Murata, and then the Imperial and the Cordoba. And um, but I was there for all of that. It was just a it was a great time. And then we got the club started in '83. So. So before I get into detail on that, yeah. uh, we're going to back up a little bit to uh, the Petties. And you yeah. guys had Kyle Petty Boot Barn on the car. Right. Buddy's right. car for a couple Right. Years. That was in 82. We had the Boot <clears throat> Barn. Uh, Kyle actually sponsored the car at North Wilkesboro and possibly Charlotte. But I know it's North Wilkesboro because I have a picture of it. Uh, but he sponsored the car there. And we had to wear these, these T-shirts or these, these baseball-style shirts. Uh, with Kyle Petty's boot barn on it. And Kyle, I think we actually out-qualified Kyle for that race, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. So it was uh, very interesting. To, you know, it was just, again, one of those things like, well, he sponsored the car, but he's, we're racing against him. <laughs> and, uh, and in that season, many times we did out-qualify Kyle because Buddy finished seventh in the point standings yeah. in 1982. And, he, he, and Richard was way behind, too, as well, for most mm -hmm. of the year, and then mm -hmm. made a little surge and like, finished in the top five. But... Um, but it was a it was a phenomenal year. I went to twenty seven to thirty races that year, um, being li living in Pennsylvania and going back and forth with other people from Maryland. And sometime I do my own driving, but it was a, just a great year. Uh, it was yeah, it was it was so much fun because yeah. he ran he he just ran. He had great equipment. He ran well enough. He didn't drop out of races. Yeah, what was it about eighty two? I mean, I mean, equipment. you know, when he started, everybody thought, okay, it's a you know, yeah. you start like a lot of independents. They'll start out, and then that slowly dropped yeah. in the standings. Yeah. But he stayed there. The I, he fought for the top ten the whole year. Yeah. I think he, for the most part of the year, wasn't he as high as fourth, fourth. or fifth? He was high as fourth at one time. <clears throat> and was basically yeah. hovering in yeah. sixth. And yeah. then I think at the last race or two, dropped last to race seven. or two, we had some bad luck. At, uh, I think he, he got wrecked at Charlotte, and um, then he had uh, another misfortune somewhere. Then we had engine problems at uh, at North Wilkesboro in the fall race. And, uh, but, you know, and then some other stuff here and there, but conceivably sixth place would have been, would have been a, would have been the best situation out of it. It'd been tough for fifth, but sixth. And here's a guy with shoestring budget against the big teams. Um, and he's using second, secondhand parts for the most Chrysler uh, parts, yes, which yes. are <laughs> no, the technology is not keeping up with no, that. No, no, <clears throat> He was using, he was using mostly petty equipment. That he that the Petties gave him after those transitions from the Magnums over to GM. So a lot of this equipment was still fairly new, and and that's why engines were lasting. That's why he had these good consistent finishes year or week in and week out, uh, and that's what propelled him into that top ten in the point standings. But teams even in the seventies and eighties, they're replacing ball joints and they're oh, replacing yeah. gears. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, you're one. Yeah. One or two races at most. Well, one of course. Yeah. Maybe two. Well, here you guys are. Yeah, we're just, possibly three, we're, four, five. Yeah, we're going no over it. We're going over it, taking it apart, putting it back on the car, uh, with the exception of engines, and for the most part. Yeah, but um, yeah, but all that kind of stuff. I mean, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't have anywhere near the. <laughs> we didn't have anywhere near the uh, pre-race. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, technical aspect of, of doing all this than than the other guys did. Um, yeah, and, and, and remember too, I know, a lot of luck involved. A lot of luck involved to to do what we did to stay out of the trouble. But Buddy just, I mean, he just he ran. That was a heck of a year. And seeing him at at, at the Waldorf, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but seeing him out there with the rest of the guys did you go was yeah. To the I went wow, yeah, that's a yeah. It was it was great. It was, it was the eighty two was the last year before the Tuxes came in in eighty three. <laughs> eighty three is when they started wearing Tuxes. But um, I did see Buddy in a Tux the following year, which. I don't think there's any pictures of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think a duck tail and yeah, a tux. <laughs> it's, you know, the country mouse comes to the city <laughs> is probably the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, funny. But yeah, but it was it was it was fun. It was just a, it was a great time, and and I know he was excited about it too. And um, it was it was a good time. Would, um, would you say that was a highlight of his career or the third place? Yes, in that, um, I think that's a good that's a really good question. I you know I don't know I I think from the. Uh, it had to be a high. Minus it was class because in too, so. financially it's better, obviously, um, because he he where he finished and he and he made more money finishing seventh in the point standings that he did at Talladega. 
Um, but overall in that year, what he accomplished for, for that team um, on that limited budget, uh, phenomenal. But would you uh, say it was stressful? Because it's like, well, we're, no offense, but we're not supposed to be here anyway. So yeah. if we drop, we're still yeah. way better than we probably thought. Did Was it conceivable that year? Okay, we could finish top ten? Was that a goal? I don't think guys? they ever went in. You know, you got to remember <clears throat> that they ran a business. They ran yeah. this, this cup team as a business. And they didn't necessarily have, in a sense, goals like uh, Kale's team or Bobby Allison's team or Darrell Waltrip's team. The contract team. stipulates no, you win three races no. you make this yeah. much. Right, right. There wasn't any <laughs> no of that. No contracts. If, if Buddy finished the race... That was first and foremost. Two, if you didn't tear up the car. And three, where you finished dictated how much money you're going to make. And that all that sort of culminated to the end where he gets a big bonus from, from Winston. But leading up to it, he was just doing his job every single race, week in and week out, to try to, try to finish as high as he possibly can to make money. That was it. It was to make money. And then carry on to the next race, and hopefully didn't have to put a quarter panel on. Hopefully didn't have to put a new front clip on, or, or, or rebuild whatever. the motor, or, or rebuild the <laughs> motor. Yeah. So those were all things, and all that luck just kept going and going and going, and um, that's that's where we are. So. So then eighty three. Did you did you think conceivably this could continue? Um, I was hoping it would. Um, well, of course. But they, uh, yeah, I was hoping <laughs> but it would. But but <clears throat> after the first few races, we realized that. The equipment wasn't as good as it was before, and they weren't. They were basically doing the same things on equipment that they were before, and 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 Buddy had to sort of, you know, it was just a different. It wasn't as much, wasn't as good a luck, um, but and and we just didn't have nearly the kind of season that we should have, and it really comes down to equipment, Kevin. It was just like yeah. you know, you just it just that that car just didn't run as well as it did the year before. And we're trying to stretch this equipment. Older. Yeah, another year older. Okay. Body style. We had one new car that we brought into 83 that we changed over to another Imperial. And then um, he tried to work out some partnership with Cecil Gordon as well. And Cecil was sort of at the end of his career. Yeah. And that didn't really work out well. He had all coil spring cars. And oh. Buddy had a leaf spring torsion bar set oh. up. And <laughs> so the short track's fine, but the bigger speed, super speedways... The, that car worked better. Um, but, you know, and then you go into the 84, and then you're thinking Chrysler's, you know, and remember, too, in 83, Chrysler's pretty much saying, yeah, we're done with all this. Now, mm-hmm. they were really done with it before, mm-hmm. but they had equipment left over. So they still had, but we're running out of equipment. We're running out of a car that's not made anymore. So at some point in 85, saying, well, we're going to have to switch. We're going to have to make a switch because in 86, we can't run anything Chrysler. No Chrysler Cordoba, no Murata, no Imperial, none of that stuff. It's past the three years where it was allowed. So then he transitioned. Then you have another OK season and an OK season in 85. It's like, well, we're going to have to do something. And Buddy really had to pay a lot, put more out of his pocket to start funding the team than he did before. And when you do that, that's sort of the writings on the wall. So, so what was with Ford versus Chevy, though? He went with Ford. He had a good relationship with the Elliots. So... He had a really good relationship yeah. with Bill Elliott, and they sort of bought, uh, formed good a... Good season fr- to switch to Ford, yeah, 85. Yeah, 85. <laughs> so <They ran. laughs> Bill looked at it, I think, and I don't know this for a fact, but I'm just remembering this from the time, is that Bill needed somebody else to go scuff his tires, to try some things out. So oh, Buddy was sort of that... R&D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. So Buddy was sort of like the R&D, so he got a couple of Fords and he did some races. I mean, we ran new tires for a couple of races at Dover. I remember this distinctly, where everybody else was running scuffs. But Buddy went out there and ran on new tires. But we're not used to running on new tires. We call them stickers. Right. We call right, them sticker right. tires because <laughs> they have stickers on them. And yeah. then, you know, we don't. We hardly ever had sticker tires. <laughs> so uh, we would go down to Bill's pit, bring the sticker tires back, run them for 40 or 50 laps, and then take them back down to Bill's pit. Because Bill's car was running better on, on the scuffs, on the mm-hmm. unused tires, than we were. Um, but it made sense for us because we didn't have tire bill. So mm-hmm. there's there's a couple thousand dollars right there Thank at a race. And even, that's, even that's, then. <laughs> yes, even Woo. then. So, uh, but that was, you know, and, and that relationship was good for Bill, was good for Buddy because it was less money at the outlay for new parts and, and new cars, everything else. So um, it's, it's a shame that his 500th race was actually in a Ford Thunderbird and not in a Chrysler product. But yeah. that's, it is what it is. 
So, so then, Buddy, you know, got hurt in '86. Yeah, yeah. But he was already starting to kind of rent his ride right. here and there. Right. But do you think right. that? I'm sure that accelerated. That did. It, that that just you know. And then you know, we had opportunities with panel um, with the sponsorship with panel knits to sort of go first class in '86 and um, the injuries and so forth. Well, that Martinsville so, race in April, that's right. he was. He, he was, was right going up for there. it. He was right he up blew there. Up. I think yeah. he blew up at that race. Yeah, yeah. rear end, I think, maybe. I don't oh, okay. Yeah, I knew he, I, it was something. About 40, 50 it was left mechanical. To go up. Yeah, it was mechanical. Uh, but he was on his way to probably his best ever finish at Martinsville. And that was one track that he always tried to. Gee, I he just, why. Yeah, he just, <laughs> he just upped the ante at that track. And we had better, We everything was better at, at Martinsville. We used, we, used uh, we, we did run new tires, sticker tires there every once in a while. Um, we seem to run a different gear setup, so we run a little bit harder. So, you know, we pull a little more RPMs. And, and Buddy, I think, just mentally uh, just was geared up for that race. He just wanted to the put on the show crowd. for his hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and there were a lot of people that pulled for him. Uh, so it was, it, you know, but with that panel money coming in, that helped things. Uh, but then later... The injury at uh, at Pocono, and then uh, subsequently with Rick Baldwin's issue at, at, at right. Michigan the week before, the week after, it just sort of everything sort of spiraled downward, and that, that was sort of near the end. So, well, let's go back to the fan club. Sorry, yeah, yeah. racing. People club. call it fan club. Well, you can right, you can correct yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were a fan club, but I called it a racing club because I wanted to do something different that no other club really did, and that was to give back a portion of the uh, well, membership you and your dues. family, trendsetters. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, we try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but so it was something different because many people that I would come across before the club was even started that would come to me and say, you know, hey, I've been part of the Petty Club. Maybe we're going to do anything with Buddy. And it's like, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I did some PR work with Buddy. And I did some one race sponsorship deals and things like that. And that's really, we'll get into the racing part of it later. But when I got out of the racing mindset and I wanted to stay in the sport, the public relations was one thing I wanted to do. So while trying to attract one race sponsorships and full-time sponsorships, um, the club idea came into, uh, into effect, uh, into play. And I was like, these are old Chrysler fans that just, that just wanted to keep the car on the track because nobody else was really driving Chrysler products. And no offense to Buddy, would you say they were kind of oh, petty maybe, e, maybe even even yeah. Stephen with okay Chrysler and Buddy or more Chrysler, less Buddy or I think hard to tell. I, every <laughs> one of those fans would come to the track and they'd pull for Petty, but they'd be like, no, he's not driving that, he's not driving the Dodge, but I'm still a Petty fan, so it hurts me. Because I'm going to get in my Dodge truck when I leave this race. <laughs> right. But Richard is driving a Monte Carlo. Just doesn't look. Right. <laughs> that doesn't just doesn't. Right. <laughs> just doesn't seem right. But they pulled for Petty. But he, but but then there was always like, there's that Arrington guy out there with that Murata. Look at that thing. Doesn't he? That's an Imperial out there. That, that's a, that's a luxury car. What's he doing with an Imperial? <laughs> and he's and I was like, son of a gun. He's like, <laughs> he's fifth in the point standing. So, um, it was. They just, they had a soft place in their heart for Buddy because they understood his plight. They understood that he was, um, the only way he could stay on board is, and financially is to keep running Chrysler products because he had all these parts. <clears throat> so he went out there week in, week out. And um, sure enough, the guy would outrun some of these big buck teams. And the idea came in 83. It was like, well, why don't I start a fan club? But let's call it a racing club. Let's do something different. Let's, with all these people that have all this interest, Let's give back a portion to Buddy's team, and then maybe we can help out here and there. We can buy maybe a set of tires. We can buy, you know, uh, you know, some parts. Do something that that, that Buddy what wouldn't need? have to pay out of his pocket <clears throat> and keep the racing racing budget as 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 thin as it was. Just keep it in check, and then I can come in with a check and say, hey, Buddy, here we got here's a check for two new tires this weekend. Or, hey, or this will get us the Californian back. Or, the yeah, or for gas band. money. Yeah, anything. <laughs> Feed the so, team or whatever. So, and I don't really have the, the, the bookkeeping back from that standpoint, but we gave a lot of money to the, to the team back to Buddy, and it would have been done through any other different ways. It could have been, 
It could have been for drinks that they were had to buy or something, <laughs> any, anything. Mm -hmm. But that's what we did. And it was unique in that we found people that had no problem sending in $7 or $12 for membership dues. <laughs> and then and sometimes people would send me checks for $25, $50, $100 saying, look, I just want you to take the money and put it towards you know the use for, the, for, for Buddy's team. So we had this sort of cult following and, <laughs> and like yeah. there were a handful of people that um, would just send us checks. So then I, in turn, wheels turning, <laughs> how can we do this? How can we raise more money? So, you know, if you looked at any old Winston Cup scenes from 83, 84, 85, you'd see this guy out there somewhere <laughs> doing some type of crazy mm -hmm. promotion. And one, uh, Rick Houston just sent me a picture of it. Uh, the other day was when we had in Martinsville where we auctioned off, well, not auctioned, we, raff, we raffled off one of Buddy's uniforms, <laughs> his driving <laughs> uniform. And I think we made, I don't know, seven or 800 bucks off of that. That's a lot of money back then. That's a lot. So I'll everyone <laughs> everyone got like for like, a, for like five bucks, you get one chance or $3, you get uh, 10, three, or $10, you get three chances or whatever. So everyone got a ticket. And then my brother... Uh, Andy would pull the winning number out, and I forget who won it. But we would do those things on a constant basis, whether it be car parts, Buddy's uniform, you name it. What can you we do did with it. car parts? Yeah. yeah. What we so what we did before and, social media, right? You know, I mean, we imagine we three had, times. Oh my God! Tag somebody. Now then, it was a raffle. Now thing, imagine right? if we had that stuff today. <laughs> you know, and this today we could have done that. But but, but here's the thing, yeah. also that, and sorry to interrupt no, you, right. I'm going to get yelled at for doing it on YouTube. But anyway, but. Your club, people came later and tried to do it. Yeah, and they didn't stick around long. No, no, it was, it was, it was just, it, it's interesting how all that came about. It was just a different, like I said, it was. I just wanted to do something different. My mom and my stepfather had Richard's Club, and they did everything. You know, they did it the way you're supposed to do it. They do the newsletters four times a year. Every year. They have a mailing list and give something out. I want a sticker. This you is, got a sticker. This is all before internet and i mean just imagine you get a thing in the mail with with a newsletter today you get a newsletter you look it up online you just exactly. don't you don't have this same type of thing but they would mail out a newsletter and i did the same thing but i wanted always to, on time. i want to do something there. different i always introduce people like within the pit crew that were volunteers like you know we had this one kid that came literally from south dakota drove down Went to Rockingham, jumped the fence, <laughs> saw Buddy. Can I work for you, Buddy? Like, yeah, I guess. You know, next thing you know. <laughs> That's a good he, buddy, Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so next thing you know, he's he's driving back to Martinsville after the race, and he's, he's working for Buddy for the whole year. You know, he's getting mm. paid, I don't know, probably six bucks an hour. The kid wanted to go racing. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to go racing, and he had this <laughs> idea just and and did it. So we had all this all this stuff. So people, I wanted people to make aware of, let them see <laughs> Uh, Roland Pence was his name. Roland, if you're still around, miss you, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, but Roland did that, and he he just that was. And so people need to know about that. People need to know how these how these people come about and work on the crew. Mm -hmm. And then people would ask me, "Hey, can you can you can you fit me on the crew or whatever?" And I was like, "I can ask Buddy and Joey, you know." And Jim and Phyllis Willard from Ohio were, were one of those people. They were big fans of the uh, fan club members, and uh, ended up. Being, striking up a friendship with Buddy, and then in turn, until Buddy's passing, we're doing work for Buddy, we're hauling cars back and forth with other stuff. It, all this came about because we did things differently, mm -hmm. and the club was different in that regard, and why no one else, maybe it was just a mystique about it. Maybe it's just because Buddy was his lone independent driving Chrysler products. And, and he's a bit different. He yeah, had a high pitched voice. Yeah, yeah. Had the, just the black everything about it. Buddy was like a duck tail. Here. He had the yeah. Mopar. <clears throat> Buddy was just different. So you had that mystique or that aura about him that no one else had. And I don't know if it would have worked for a guy. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, think of a guy from back in that day uh, that might have had a fan club, but I don't know. Well, that uh, was Buddy. It wasn't, that was. it wasn't he didn't put on airs and try no. to act like it. Mm -hmm. That was him. That was what His you saw is what you got. And, Absolutely. And I try to keep the club somewhat authentic in that regard. Um, it was but, authentic. It was. Uh, but a guy like, I don't know, um, I'm thinking Clark Dwyer or Trevor Boys or some of the other guys, they just, they were in the sport, but they just didn't have the following. They just, yeah. it was never going to be like that. What well, so, can we hang on right. them to, to yeah. not to say, this may sound funny, but it was almost 
self-promoting. You just yeah. needed to give it yeah. a little push. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and um, it, it, it's not to say it's easy, but mm -hmm. easier. Because, mm -hmm. like you say, what do you promote about a guy like Clark Dwyer? Hey, he comes from Colorado. Yeah. Or Trevor. Oh, yeah. he comes from Canada. Canada. Yeah. Now yeah. what? You know, that's it. I mean, he drives for Hilton. That's yeah. cool. But yeah. now what? Yeah, right. Where so. you know, you had all those little. Buddy had to connect the dots, is what it was. Yes. Buddy had good, good way the history it. behind it, a relationship with the Petties. He drove Mopar. Uh, everyone loved the Mopar fans that were dying for something out there. It just, everything connected. Something different. Everything connected, and that's what made it uh, made it really, really cool. And, and I had a blast doing it. But our main goal was not only just to do all this stuff with the fans, but our main goal was to hopefully get him a full-time sponsorship. And unfortunately, we never really got a hold of that. We panel sort of did, but I wasn't there. But the 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 full time sponsorship was really a goal for mine to get him to where he could compete week in and week out with the big boys. And I, 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 I was, I was really, you know, when I, when I had to fold the club in a sense when Buddy slowed down, I wish that was one, one thing. I wish I just we could go back and just say, hey, I wish we could have got him a full time sponsor. I would have loved to see him run with that kind of money week in and week out um, with Chrysler product or maybe switching back to going over to Ford, but it would have been nice to at least see him in a competitive basis. But, but what's the word say? One plant, the other waters. That's it. God gives the increase. So you had a, yeah. you had a part in it. Yeah, you we know? did. We was, did. We, we had a blast doing it. And I had a, I had a blast running the club. Yeah, it was a lot of work and everything, but uh, you know, uh, it was, if you want to talk about promotion, what's that H word you used earlier today? <laughs> Halcyon? <laughs> Halcyon. Those are my true Halcyon days, yes. Um, but if you talk to anybody back at Winston Cup scene or Grey National scene back then, I guess, um, and and they would, and you mentioned my name, like, oh, Bob Laird. <laughs> Man, every Sunday, every weekend, he'd be like, oh, Tracking can me you down. get this picture? Can you get this picture on here? Can you do an article here? Can you do this? Um, but my main goal was to, to, to the end was just to try to get Buddy as much recognition much awareness out there before all the advent of social media mm -hmm. um, different than world. it was. It was different. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was the – I enjoyed it. As always, special thanks to a true racer and friend of this page, Mark Wright. As well, we haven't given enough props to Brian Norton, who has gone above and beyond to make Stock Car Facts a definite better channel.